Who among us hasn't found themselves in a totally awkward social situation? You know, like running into an ex and his new girlfriend? Or hitting reply all with a bitchy text or email to the wrong person? Sticky social situations are inevitable for all of us. In this video, I'm sharing how to navigate those sticky situations and get past them as gracefully as possible. There are always numerous effective ways to handle a situation, so please feel free to chime in and share what you would do or how you handled a particularly sticky situation. We all learn from each other, so let's do this. you run into an ex and his new girlfriend. For some reason, I find this one the most cringeworthy, probably because I hate being caught off guard because I have zero poker face. So you'll see my initial reaction like, in a nutshell, be bright, be brief, and be gone. First, poise and confidence are key. Stand confidently and smile. Much easier to do if you're feeling super cute that day. <laughs> Second, be the first to extend your hand and introduce yourself to her. Remember, she's probably nervous too. Something as simple as, hi, I'm Shelly, nice to meet you. Knowing me, I would probably add something like, your sweater is gorgeous. An authentic compliment always melts the ice and it really sets the tone that you're friendly, you're not trying to get him back. Finally, something as simple as, it was nice to see you both, enjoy the rest of your day, and move on. Either way, you want to step away looking and feeling like you were a class act. Yeah, but what if I really can't stand her? Look, if you see them first and you can go left instead of right to avoid them, go left. If you can't get around it, like my mom would say, suck it up, buttercup. Be bright, be brief, and be gone. Smile confidently, nice to see you, enjoy the day, move on. Anybody can exercise restraint for 30 seconds. Well, most of us. At dinner, you ordered way less than your friend, but the bill comes and she wants to go halfsies on it. Let me first say, shame on that friend if it's totally obvious. As in, you had a side salad, she had apps, a main dessert, and a few cocktails. Speaking for myself only, if it's the first time, I'll suck it up and I'll go halfsies just to avoid the discomfort. I won't like it, but I'll do it. If it happens again, the bill comes and she goes, splitsies! I'd lay down 20 bucks and say this covers my side salad plus the tip. <laughs> At that point, it's clear that she's taking advantage of the situation, so I don't feel bad. If you're not in the financial position to pay for half of her meal or understandably, you just don't feel like it, I would probably say something to the effect of, look, normally splitsies is fine, but since I just had a side salad, do you mind if I just cover my share plus the tip? I mean, come on people. What would you do? Please comment below. I love hearing from you. A friend borrowed a decent amount of money and still hasn't paid you back. What do you do? I heard this saying a long time ago and for some reason it stuck with me. Never lend or risk more than you can afford to lose. But if it's already done and you really need her to repay you, shoot her a quick text or an email. I'm happy that I was able to lend you $300 last month for your car, but I really need to be repaid no later than the end of this month. Moving forward, most relationship experts say, quote, and I'm not reading from a teleprompter, I'm reading an expert quote, with friends and family, you should only gift money, never loan it. If you're inclined to help them, make it a gift. It'll avoid problems in the future. If it's a really big loan that they need, not to be mean, but that's what banks are for. You're not the bank. A new acquaintance among my group of friends always talks smack about a particular friend that I really like. I want to stick up for my friend, but I don't want to create conflict or drama in the group. What do I do? Stick up for your friend. If you were the target, you would want somebody to go to bat for you. On the other hand, I understand not wanting to create discomfort or drama. Here's how you do it. Oh my God, did you see Sally last week? She was wearing this ridiculous sweater. She thinks she's so cool. No, that's not my experience. I've known her for a really long time and she's actually really nice and she's a good friend of mine. First, you're sticking up for your friend. Check. Second, it's a dog whistle to the person to stop trashing your friend. Check, check. Third, because it's firm yet non-confrontational, you're giving the person a chance to save face. Oh, maybe I just misread the situation. Either way, it should have a chilling effect on future trashing. That's what I would do, but I know you ladies have undoubtedly encountered the same situation. How did you handle it or what would you say to the person? Whenever I meet a certain friend of mine for lunch or dinner or drinks, she talks incessantly about herself, her business. On the rare occasion, it's my turn to share. She's all of a sudden constantly glued to her phone, scrolling, texting, checking emails, checking Instagram. It's really rude and it hurts my feelings, but what do I do? Okay, I had this exact 
situation. I had a friend who always wanted to get together with me probably because I would listen to her and she would literally spend the entire time talking about herself, talking about her business, talking about her husband, blah, blah, blah. At some point she would ask me like a cursory question probably because she felt obligated like, oh, social norms say I should ask her about herself. The second I opened my mouth, her eyes would flick to her phone. She'd pick it up. She's scrolling through it and she'd say, I'm listening. Scroll, 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 text, text, text. I'm listening, text, 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 text. Really annoying. Here is my admittedly passive aggressive solution. I'll just call a spade a spade, y'all. You know that about me. The second she gravitated to her phone, I would stop mid-sentence. Sometimes there would be a good 15 to 20 seconds of silence before she'd say, sorry, I'm still listening. I'd start again, eye to the phone. Silence again. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. Finally, I stopped accepting invitations from her. Maybe that's a lame way of handling it, but that's what I did. I just figured if she's not that interested in me and I'm really just a sounding board for her, I have better things to do. I guess if it's a really good friend and you're totally vested in the relationship, you could say something along the lines of, look, it really hurts my feelings when it's my turn to talk and you pick up your phone and completely ignore me the whole time because Instagram and how many likes you got is more important. That at least opens the conversation and makes her aware of what she's doing if she's, I mean, I, how could you not be aware that you're doing that? What do you guys think? Comment below. How much was your house? Why don't you have kids? How come you're still single? How old are you? Awkward personal questions. Sometimes, well, I should say many times, people don't think twice before they ask an overly personal question or at least one that you don't particularly care to answer. And it catches you flat-footed. Uh, mm, her, uh, mm, been there. The best and most effective response, in my opinion, is four words. Why do you ask? Said with a slight surprise and a pleasant tone of voice. It's a simple redirect that shifts the burden to the other person to either give a legitimate response as to why he or she wants to know or to realize it was really kind of inappropriate and change the subject. I always get stuck talking to the most boring person ever at events. How do I end it without being rude? Here are three canned phrases I use that are easy and effective. One. I'm gonna excuse myself to go to the ladies' room, but it was so nice to have met you. Oink. It's been so nice chatting with you. Have an amazing time in Indonesia. I'm sure you're gonna love it. Oink. Brad, it was so nice to have met you. I don't wanna monopolize any more of your time. I'll move along so that you can chat with others. Notice they're short, sweet, and definitively end the conversation. End with a smile, a brief handshake, and move on. Finally, in my opinion, the stickiest situation of all of these. Because with this particular situation, you cannot unring the bell. You can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. We're talking accidentally sending a bitchy text or email to the wrong person. There it is in all of its permanent written glory for all to see. No wiggling out of it. No, oh, I didn't say that. Oh, you said it, here it is. I can't believe I'm sharing this with you but I'm going to. It's been 10 years and still I am scarred by it because I was mortified. My sister and I inadvertently, well, okay, when I say my sister and I, it was actually me, did this to a woman we had hired for a business project nine or 10 years ago. She lived in Manhattan, so we had never met in person and had worked the past three to four months with her over email. Two weeks before the project deadline, she decides to email us that, oh, by the way, I'm eight and a half months pregnant, fine. And I'm scheduled for a C-section next week and we'll be going out on maternity leave. You guessed it, she already had all of our money and more importantly, we missed the deadline because we needed certain deliverables from her. So I emailed my sister and you know, sisters can share stuff that you can't normally say to other people. A rant with choice words about this woman and the situation. Suddenly my phone lights up, my sister is calling me and I'm thinking, oh, she's calling to like talk about it. Hey, um, you hit reply all. If something like this has ever happened to you, here is the gist of what most etiquette experts say. Pick up the phone and immediately call the person. Say, I just sent you an email by accident and it wasn't very nice. Don't bother saying that you didn't mean it. You meant it, everybody knows it. Then tell them kind of the truth behind it. You've been frustrated and tell them why. If you really wanna smooth things over, suggest getting together to talk about it so they can see that you're sincerely sorry. So you may be wondering what I did. Okay, well, I pretty much did that. Only because I'm a nice person and I felt bad, like kind of ragging on her behind her back. 
I said, obviously it wasn't meant for you to see that. I'm just really frustrated about the situation. It would have been nice to know months ago what your plans were, but here we are. Still, it wasn't very nice for me to say those things and I do apologize. I never heard from her again. <laughs> My sister and I subsequently sent a gift basket. So now that's our joke between each other. If I say, well, I talked to somebody and she said, do you have to send a gift basket? <laughs> Probably. Ugh. Inauthentic has never been a word that I've been called. <laughs> now I double, no, I triple check emails and texts before hitting send. Lesson learned. Have you ever done something like that? And if so, how did you handle it? I always love hearing from y'all. And until a couple days from now, I will see y'all on... Stay.